Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you this morning. I hope that everybody's uh, getting their day out to a good start. I hope that you are in the right frame of mind. Uh, those who have uh, spent any time uh, around me or pay any, any pay, anybody that pays attention to anything that I say, you, you'll understand that I pray, place a great deal of gravity into mindset how you think, how you perceive, how you make your choices and decisions, your belief system, and so much more. And so how you start your day up here is going to have a massive impact of how everything else goes. Uh, today is Thursday and it's business mindset. I was having a discussion with someone couple of weeks ago and it was concerning uh, how technology which can be so influential and powerful uh, in the attainment of goals and the achievement of different accomplishments and all of that you know how it's also one of the greatest threats that we have right now and I sit up and I thought about it for a while, and and I I I made a statement somewhat along the lines of, man, what if we could get this generation millennials? What if we could get millennials to take the work ethic of our grandparents and merge it with the technology that they are so adept to using. And in that first statement, which was in itself powerful, came a, a second epiphany. And the second epiphany was, here lies the problem. You know, I grew up, I was reared by my great grandparents. I was literally reared by my mom's mom's parents. My grandmother's parents reared me. And it, it flows off the tongue easy, but to understand the dynamic of that big generational gap and how they view things and how I view things. First of all, it gives me an understanding of some of the challenges I have with my own kids in communication and understanding and how they view me. You know, they view me as ancient. I remember uh, even as, you know, as a young child in my teens, thinking how old 30 was how old and out of uh, out of touch 30 was, you know, and having hit 30, 40 and 50, realizing I'm still learning and I don't have it all. And, and that, it, you know, there's so much more to get, you know, it's obviously different, but I understand it because I look at it and I see how I felt with my grandparents, you know, and we're talking great grandparents. But the one thing I saw was both parents were up before the sun came up. I still have that work ethic. Uh, you're not gonna get me in the bed. I'm, uh, you know, there's an ongoing joke that sleeping in for me is seven o'clock, and it is. I'm not gonna be in the bed after seven. Uh, my body won't let me. Uh, you know, uh, now I may get tired later on in the morning and take a quick nap. You know, my body forces me to do that sometime at this age. Uh, I'm probably gonna be doing some changes to the diet to help with that. But here's the thing. Uh, they were up 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, moving around. Even after my grandfather retired in 1972, when I was five years old, he started an entire new life. He started a landscaping business, and he, he was up every morning. And even when he chilled on that in his 70s, he still was up every morning. And the rule in the house was you could not be in the bed after 7 o'clock, no matter what. Now, what you could do is you could get up, go eat breakfast with the family, do your chores. After everything that needs to be done is done, if you're still sleepy and tired because you had a long day the day before, you can go back and lay down. But you couldn't sleep in. You're going to get up. You're going to get the things you need to get taken care of, taken care of. And then if you need to take a break or take some rest, you go back and rest. But we're not going to sleep in in this house. And that was the rule. And it wasn't even a problem for me because I grew up in it. But 
I look at the work ethic and they got things done. And so they passed that on to me. You get up, you get the work done. And then, you know, uh, I look at the technology they have now. You know, there's nothing that you can't know. There's nothing that you can't learn. There's nothing that you can't find. Now, obviously, because anybody can post anything on the internet, you got to cipher through and filter through uh, so much stuff that may not be meaningful or maybe not even be true to find the truth. But there's a process for that, that you can learn and you can teach yourself. It doesn't need a degree to do it. You don't need to go to some uh, fancy uh, uh, school uh, to learn it. It's just process. And there are people that will teach you the process. There's lists of how the process works online. So everything you need is within your fingertips. Here's what's happened, though. You would think that people coming from a work ethic, like, well, you got to understand that we come from, uh, even in the most darkest time, the most powerful work ethic. You got to think there have been slave graves that have been dug up and looked at, and you can see where these people will work so hard that their muscle tendons detached from their bones. And so to talk about a black person being lazy talks about a lack of understanding of history. But in understanding this, here's, here's the thing. They come, you come from this, but somewhere along the line, technology assisted in the conversion of work ethic to empty expectation. And what do I mean by that? I mean that the more we advanced in technology, the quicker we had access to stuff. See, I grew up during a time, and like I said, relatively speaking, I'm not that old, I'm 52, but I grew up during a time where if I wanted to know something, I had to go to the library. It wasn't nothing in my hand to touch, to look it up. I had to get off my ass. I had to get, 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 you know, get on my bike or catch the bus. And I'm talking before I had a driver's license. And, you know, and I wasn't running around asking my parents to take me everywhere I wanted to go. That's something else. It was like, if I wanted to get there and it was important to me, I figured it out. I knew they had things to do and there would be things that I couldn't get to that I would need them for. And I saved those for that. But I sit up, I get up, get on the bike or catch the bus. Uh, and the, the, the most extensive library in Houston during that time was the downtown library. Catch the bus downtown. Uh, during that time, that was easy to do because every bus went through downtown. Downtown was the uh, transfer hub. Uh, that's changed. Now we got stations all over the place. Uh, so buses don't have to go downtown now, but it did then. So you get on the bus, you go downtown, you go up, and then uh, you, you got to know the book you're looking for, but there's no way to look the book up on the internet because the internet doesn't exist. So you got to have a way of picking up on things, listening when people talk, writing stuff down and understand stuff. So you go in. And so now uh, you, you, you were researching stuff in the card catalog. The card catalog is this things were told you where every book was. So you look up the book, you find the book in the card catalog and you get the number off the book. And then you go wherever that section and shelf is and you find the book and then you check out the book or you stay there and you read the book and you take notes. Um, I did this all through school, uh, just going to spend a lot of time in libraries, reading and learning. You know, uh, there was a time like uh, early in life where my grandmother knew my passion for reading and knew my passion for wanting to know and understand stuff. Uh, at the age of five, she brought the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. Many of you have heard the story before. Uh, brought the entire Encyclopedia Britannica and uh, had it shipped. You know, that's when door-to-door uh, -door salesmen were, were like a dime a dozen. Every time you look at somebody, it's not going to be able to sell you something. They were selling milk. They were delivering linens and tiles. They were selling uh, vacuum cleaners. They were selling encyclopedias. And it's just, what well, you every now and then, somebody's knocking on the door to sell you something. Well. She knew my passion and she stood up and she reached inside of her bosom where she kept her stash and she paid in cash. But that said, I remember when it arrived, my grandfather got down and put the little stand that came with it together and shelved all those books. From the age of five to the age of 10, I read them all, every last one of them. And then I became this little quoting machine of facts that drove people crazy. I still 
uh, drive people crazy at times because I talk a lot. I, you know, I've calmed down a lot, but I'm very loquacious as a kid. But what I'm trying to get at is that was a yearning to learn and not learn empty stuff. I want to learn stuff that had value. I want to learn stuff that people who didn't live where I lived, but lived in places I wanted to live, knew that I didn't know. Why do they do this this way? Why is it important to do something like this instead of like this? You know, what's the difference between the people that live where I live and the people that live over in, in Houston at the time? Uh, the the, the go-to community, there are a lot of them now, but the go-to community then for, I mean, deep wealth was River Oaks, still where the old money resides. And, you know, what's the difference? And then... Uh, my grandmother knew a family that when she first moved to Houston, a Jewish family, when she first moved to Houston, she worked for them. She did their house and stuff until she got her license uh, and started her process of eventually owning her own salon. She worked for this Jewish family and they always talked about certain things. And one of the things that they would talk about was uh, Napoleon Hill and uh, Earl Nightingale. And so she would still communicate with them and they were talking about Earl Nightingale. And so she found out that he had LPs. She went out and bought me Earl Nightingale LPs. So I'm sitting up, everybody else is listening. You know, I had uh, about an hour of the Jackson 5 and whatever else was going on back then. And uh, I played that and then on the LP and here's, you know, Earl Nightingale talking about power, possibility, success and all this other stuff. Uh, using a heavy, giving a heavy dose of Think and Grow Rich. And, you know, just learning about that. And so I wanted to read that. And it was just on and on and on. So I just got ideas in my head. And I've spent my life moving after and, and reaching for and fighting for those ideas. And here's the thing. None of them came instantaneously. None of the things that I've been able to accomplish that have any intrinsic or significant value came just because I said I wanted it just because I looked at it and said, okay, this is who I am, this is what I'm gonna do. It took sometimes years to pull something in. And the thing is, it took work ethic. It took a willingness to push through things. I see kids nowadays, everything's at a drop of a dime. Nothing has to be worked for as far as getting something. You ask a question, they're not gonna think, they're not gonna search their mind, they're gonna immediately pick up that phone. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with knowing, but what are you searching for? But here's the problem with it, because everything they wanna know is so instantaneously attainable, they are, they are at a stage now where they think that everything that they desire is gonna be instantaneous. Everybody is in this vacuum of, a microwave society where immediate gratification is the goal. If I can't get it now, then I don't want it. I can't have it. And I'm moving on to the next thing. You got so many people that are on their 30th thing. Why? Because they never got that immediate gratification. Or maybe they got some immediate gratification, but they didn't pay attention to it. And because they didn't get it the right way, they can't repeat it. They looked up on it. And now they can't repeat it because it didn't come through principle. It didn't come through a, a, a set of standards. It didn't come through consistent work ethic. It didn't come through a commitment to see it all the way through. And that's the thing that we are missing now is that we have lost the work ethic of our ancestors, our grandparents. And, and, and now we have the technology, but we don't have the work ethic. See, they had the work ethic but they didn't have the technology. They didn't have the access. They had the work ethic, but many things that they needed to get to the next level was hidden from them. Many things that they needed in order to excel was not readily accessible. You know, there were a few of us who were able to get out and find it. There were a few families that were able to get out and find it. But for the most part, the vast majority did not have access to the elements, the components, the knowledge, the systems that would help them do exceptional and extraordinary things. They had to work three times and four times as hard as anyone else to get ahead. And they were doing it. Like I said, my, my grandmother owned her own salon. And then she did this, this whole thing. I mean, she didn't stop owning it until like she was 90. She shut it down. Uh, it was initially in a place called Fifth Ward in Houston, and she shut it down. It was on Bringhurst and Farmer, and she shut it down, 
uh, since she was going to retire, 1976. I was nine years old. My grandfather had already retired in 1972. She came home, and after about six months of being at home with him, she said, no, nah, I got to go. She went off into this neighborhood that was right next to the neighborhood we grew, in, grew up in. Our neighborhood was not affluent, but this neighborhood was recognized at that time as one of the most affluent Black communities in Houston. It was called Pleasantville. And that was an old folks community within the community, literally little houses where the elderly lived and they had a center. She went in and opened, used the shop they had that they didn't have a licensed cosmetologist. She took over the shop, put her license on it and she worked there until she was 90. And one of the funniest things that I would sit up and listen to when she would come home while I was still there before, you know, I, I, you know, I became an adult and moved out. Uh, when she would come home and say, oh, Lord, these old folks getting on my nerves. I'm like, mama, you like 70 something. How old are these people? And, you know, and I went over there and meet them and obviously she would be proud. And they were some older people. I mean, some of them over a hundred, but she kept doing this. But the thing is that came from a work ethic that these kids today don't know. And I'm like, what if we took the technology that gives us access, anything you want to know about anybody and how they're doing it is out there. There are no secrets. I, I, I've uh, looked at some of the wealthiest people out there the Warren Buffetts, uh, Ray Dalio, David Swenson, uh, and on and on, guys who make their money by making money and make money. And they are telling, they are readily sharing it. It's in books. It's in books. Books after books after books of how it's being done. And it's nothing exceptional or extraordinary about them except they're on their grind. They're true to their craft. They're not out there just making willy-nilly nilly decisions. They spend hours upon hours understanding the market that they operate in, and they have developed their own unique uh, approach to doing it. And each one of those approaches is a little different. There are some commonalities. They all look at the risk uh, uh, assessment. They all look at the cost assessment as far as fees are concerned. They also look at taxation, and then they're all going to, in some way, diversify. Those are things that are coming among them, but they're not all into the same thing. But if you look at it and you search it, it's out there. Everything you want, if you want to get into Forex, there's enough information out there to get you ready to put you into Forex. You want to get into stocks. If you want to get into index trade, uh, index, uh, indexing, uh, like the S&P 500, uh, something that's going to compound your investments, it's out there. If you want to learn how uh, to be a better husband, a better wife, there's enough information and enough people out there. If you want to know any, and then there are people, if you're real lazy, there are people like me. You come and pay me. I bring it to you, teach it to you, and get you. You tell me what you want, I get you. There's absolutely no reason anybody should be struggling now. The problem is we've got a mindset that does not match the access. We, if we had the mindset of our grandparents and great-grandparents, that knew if I don't get up early this morning and grind until I can't grind no more, I'm not going to eat. And what happened is those older people grind and grind and grind and, and worked and worked. And some of them built some decent platforms on which to launch their children. And their children got out and worked and worked. And then they set up. And it, what happened is it got a little easier. And then technology became a little more advanced. And what happened is we produced a lazy generation. They just want to sit around and look at screens. They want to sit around and play games on screens. They want to sit around and play music from screens. They want to sit around and, 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 and look up stuff and, and share stuff from screens. They want to be on Snapchat and Instagram, watching people present stuff on screens and never ever thinking that there's the power within the screen to sit, give them a life that they never dreamed of because they don't have the work ethic or the drive of the ancestors, of, of those who came before them. They don't have the, if, you, if we could just find a way to take the work ethic of our parents and grandparents, and merge it into this world of rapidly evolving technology and do it with a specific mindset 
that there is something we're going to accomplish with this technology. The, the possibilities are endless. They are literally, literally endless. But what are we doing? Rolling around, rolling around. And then as I'm sitting up and I'm talking to my buddy, we're, we're at the cigarette shop and, and, and I'm talking about it. I'm like, well, 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 how much are you doing it? And I said, oh, you know, and I'm looking at it and I'm doing it more than the average person. But have you done it with a mindset of how you're thinking about it now? Yes, you're up at 4.30 every morning, five o'clock every morning. Yes, you're seeing the kids off and you're getting ready and you're doing everything and, 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 and you've done some things. You, you know, you've gone through a process of losing and having to recover and you've done great at recovering. You, you're not back yet, but you've done great at recovering and you're still progressing. But could you be doing more? Are you optimizing the technology? And so here, here, here's what I'm going to leave you with. You've got to have a mindset. You've got to have a mindset to grind. And when I say grind, I don't mean kill yourself. I mean, have balance, but be seriously committed to putting in some work. Be committed to going the distance. Be committed to being uh, having to overcome some setbacks, some delays, some frustrations, some disappointments. Be committed to having to push past some people who simply are not going to like you because you are moving. Be committed to rising to the next level every time you hit a platform. Your job isn't to get to a place of comfort and chill. Your job is to hit these platforms raise your hands in victory, and then set your eyes on the next platform and climb and grind and fight and push. And now you've got the opportunity to do that on, on, on rapid because you've got technology that your forefathers, your ancestors, your parents did not have. We've got to look at what's in front of us. Literally, no nation now that has internet, unlimited internet, has borders. I do business outside the uh, U.S. and been doing it for years. That you, you, there's so much you can get into. There's businesses you can get into with hardly no startup overhead. You can literally sell products that have already been created, have them drop ship from the manufacturer, wherever that is, directly to the customer you sell it to. And you can do that with a site that you can create for free. And then while doing that, you can study and understand how to promote it. It's so many videos on there on how to promote it, how to get organic traffic, how to get paid traffic, how to build long-term relationships, how to engage in customer engagement so that you build relationships with your target market. All of that stuff is out there. I, I'll give you a prime example. Anybody that's been on the internet for the, uh, for the last 10 years, the last 10 years, let's just talk about the last 10 years. Uh, and you've been anyway and anyway, anyway, interested in some kind of e-commerce, some kind of business you do online. Uh, and, 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 and even now, brick and mortar stores have learned that in order to survive, you have to have an online presence. Even if people walk into your store to get what you offer, you still need to have an online presence. Why? Because 85% of people when getting ready to make a first purchase of any type are going to go online to research the best place to get it and the best, the best product. So you need an online presence. And then, and then if you meet somebody and they've already decided they want to work with you and they say, but I'm going to go check them out. And if they search you and they can't find you, they, it, it's, you're, going to, you're going to lose some of that business. So you still need an online presence. But anybody that's been around for at least 10 years on the internet and been interested in any type of e-commerce, having a site and making your site searchable, you've heard the term SEO and all the other terms that go with it. Have you noticed that right now you still hear it, but you don't hear it at the level you used to hear it at? It's not pushed and sold by service providers the way it used to be that it's either dumped into other programs or for the most part, people have kind of picked up on it. Why? Because it was available. And those who really wanted to learn about it learned about keyword density, long tail keywords, uh, uh, header placements. Uh, where to place your keywords, uh, keyword stuffing, 
all of these different things that are part of that conversation that has such a big force in creating organic traffic, meaning traffic you didn't pay for, people were searching for something and your name popped up in their search. That kind of thing comes from SEO, search engine uh, optimization. Now it's so natural and so people know so much about it. Almost anybody that's in the business can have an educated conversation, a knowledgeable, educated conversation about it because it was there. It was that you're able to go out and get it. And you can do that with anything. There's absolutely nothing that you want to do that you can't do. Is it a process? Yes. Now I came up doing it. I decided to do this thing back in 2000. New internet, new, you know, not everybody had a computer. You know, smartphones hadn't hit yet. Um, you know, that's when the next hair chirp thing was still going on. But I had to go out and bump my head a lot because that's back when they had a bunch of one one button, one put, one button push, one click, one click, one push, and and everything is gonna work for you. And you go buy it and you click it and, and, and nothing happened. I went through all that, but what I did is I learned from my mistakes. And I went through it. And then when I found people who knew something and I I, I kind of checked them out and listened to them for a while and realized they, they, I think they really know something, I went and said, okay, I need you to sharpen my learning curve, how much you charge. And I paid for it. But a lot of it, I had to get on my own. And now I share that with businesses. I share that with individuals. And it's a part of the services I offer. I cut the curve. I, I sharpened the curve. Uh, but the thing is, it's out there for the person who doesn't want, if you don't, I tell people all the time, you know, like, you know, that you have that, you know, why you don't share it? I said, because it took time. I invested parts of my life into learning this and it's that, and that's valuable and I'm going to use it. Now, here's the thing is, well, I don't want to pay for it. You don't have to pay for it. That's the beautiful thing. I tell people all the time, you don't have to pay for it, but you're going to have to go out there and get it. Now, if you want to do that, hey, I, there's a there's a value in going out and getting it and learning it on your own and finding it. There's a sense of accomplishment in doing that, you know, uh, but there's nothing wrong with sitting up and saying, I'm going to cut the curve. This dude knows I'm going to pay him. I do it. I still do it. I don't know everything. And if I want to shorten the curve, I get with the people who are at the apex of the game and say, okay, what are you doing? And I never go in thinking somebody's going to say, hey, man, I got you. Come on. No, no, no charge. Now, there are times that I come in and people recognize that I have something they want and we barter. But 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 that, that, that that's what I'm saying. You got to be hungry enough to put it all in. We've got a whole generation that if it if they push the button and it don't pop up, they done. What if we merged this technology with yesterday's work ethic? What could be possible? You got a library on your phone. You have the encyclopedia in totality on your phone. You have the advice of thousands of experts in any field you can imagine on your phone. What are we going to do with this information? Stop expecting instant gratification. It rarely comes with intrinsic value, anything of intrinsic value, anything of a significant value. It simply is a feel good moment. You want something solid. You want something valuable. You're going to have to put in some work. You're going to have to experience some setbacks. You're going to have to go through some, some delays and disappointments. That's a part of the process. You got to be committed to go the distance. And on that note, I'm going to check off of here. But I had to drop in this moment, uh, this morning, and share this with you. I hope that uh, it encourages you. I hope that you get something from it. I hope that you take it and just think about it for a while. You can never replace work ethic with technology. But what you can do is you can take the work ethic and use the technology to put your efforts on steroids. On that note, as I always say, I'm going to live my life on full so that when I die, I die on E. I'm challenging you to do the same thing. And on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. I'm going to do everything I can uh, to get uh, back to you at least once more uh, in video. Uh, I'll be sharing a lot of other stuff 
on a number of my different pages. Uh, so just hang in and get what you can, go to work. Uh, that's, that's, that's the end thing, go to work. I mean, go to work, get up and put in work. On that note, I'm out of here. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.